today we're going to be taking a look at the Olight S1 Mini Baton. Stay tuned, the review is next. I want to say that this light has been something for me personally that I have always wanted to get my hands on. It's a small compact light with high lumen output, has a magnetic base, uh, two-way clip. It, it, there's just a lot of versatility with this light that I really, really enjoy. I want to talk about a little bit about the box itself and I'll be real quick about this, but I do like Olight's attention to detail and it goes all the way out to the actual box. You know, they have this nice uh, flat black uh, background and they have this nice glossed image on the front. It really makes the product itself pop out. They give you a list of features that the light is here. Uh, the five-year warranty they offer, the QR code, some suggested applications for your, for your light. And then on the back, they give you all the specs, everything from your moonlight to your turbo settings here how much runtime they have, your waterproof rating, everything that pretty much we're gonna cover in this review is listed here on the back. So let's go ahead and get into the contents and see what Olight includes in their kits. So let's go ahead and take a closer look at the Olight S1 Mini Baton. So step out of frame so maybe it'll focus a little better. As you can see on this side, it does say Olight. It does have their branding. And we flip it over to the other side and it says S1 Mini Baton. Really, really nice. I really like the front bezel on this light. It has a blue anodized finish. And they've also done that here on the switch itself. They've added that same blue anodized ring around the switch. So very nice attention to detail. Instead of making the light all black, I do like that it has those little accent points. The S1 Mini uses a Cree XML2 LED light that gives you up to 600 lumens of light output. And this does also have a TIR reflector in it, which is the same as what they use on a lot of their other lights. Very, very smooth, very highly polished light, and it does put out very, very clean, well-balanced light. The clip on the light also is one of those two-way clips where you can clip it in either from this direction or coming back here and clip it in. The S1 Mini Baton also has an IPX8 rating, which means that it could be submerged for at least three meters for whatever given period of time that the manufacturer recommends or has approved it to be. The S1 Mini Baton also has a 1.5 meter drop resistance which is about 4.92 feet uh, US, so just shy of five feet. I have to say that I validated that by accident when doing my night testing, and I had the, the light was propped up on top of the camera, which it was about six and a half feet up off the ground, and it hit pretty hard, and I picked it up. The light worked without a prop. The overall length of the unit is 2.13 inches, and on the tail end of it, Back here, it is 0.83 inches. The overall weight of the unit is 1.52 ounces or 43 grams, and that does include the battery. So now before we can begin to use this light, one thing that we have to do, as always, is we have to remove the tail cap and we have to remove the protective film. Now, Olight does ship their lights with this yellow protective film inside and there you can see the tab itself and all you do is just take this tab and just remove it all this is, is serves as like an insulator it's basically just a point to where um, it doesn't make contact so that the light doesn't come on during transit so now that we have the tail cap removed I do want to show you guys what I was talking about before is there's a little magnet right there. If you can see that. It's not very big, not very thick, but it does allow you to stick this to a vehicle. I wouldn't test anything high speed or anything like that. Drive down the road with it stuck to your vehicle because you probably would lose the light. 
but if you're sticking it in a locker you're sticking it somewhere with like a thin metal something stationary i think you do very well with that so now the battery itself will remove that and i do want to talk about this just for a minute this is an rcr 123a this is a rechargeable lithium ion 123 battery essentially and the way you charge it is right there in the top you can see there's a charging port plug that in right into the side of the battery itself pretty unique pretty cool so this goes right into the wall and you just plug that right in guys I wanted to show you how this works uh, this is the battery pack that comes with the Olight S1 Mini Baton and basically you just go from the USB into right into the side of the battery like if you can see that it goes right into the side now this LED right now is red which means that the battery is charging or is not fully at a hundred percent yet and as soon as that goes green we will be taking this off the charger and sticking this uh, in the light itself to get it outside and get some testing done. Now this has probably been on the charger for 15-20 minutes or so. So I haven't done a lot with it outside just yet but I hope that this is going to be charged up very very soon and we can get outside and do our night test with it your battery here and oh looks like we just went green for a second I don't know what happened maybe I lost the battery pack itself no there we go it actually went green while we're doing this portion of the video so that's cool we're now at a hundred percent and I'm glad it did that so you can actually see it happen so so making sure that you have your battery oriented the right way you want to put it with the negative side of the battery which is the flat side put that in first and you had the positive post sticking upward we'll grab our tail cap and just thread that right on and now we got light so let's go ahead and get into some of the actual functionality of the light and how you use it I'll step out of frame so that it'll focus on the light a little better now to turn this to the moonlight setting you're going to push and hold your switch here for two seconds and it goes to the moonlight setting as you can see on my hand there it is very dim but this is still works very very well if you're like in an automobile you're just looking for something like really close by it'll run on a half a lumen for 15 days which is crazy this is our low setting and our low setting runs 15 lumens for 30 hours which is again very very awesome we're going to push and hold for one more second we are now on our medium setting this is 60 lumens at six hours push and hold again for one second and now we're on our high setting which is 330 lumens and it will run at this setting for one hour 60 minutes now to go to the turbo mode it's its own unique thing we're going to push twice in rapid succession and now we are at 600 lumens now do keep in mind that it runs 600 lumens for one minute and then it will reduce itself back down to 330 lumens after that minute is up and that is to protect the light itself keeping the heat down so it protects any circuitry that may be in there and kind of extend the life of your light itself so it would be good in a defensive situation that you jump it on turbo maybe maybe uh deter somebody now if we're going to go to strobe we do it the same thing we did with turbo we're going to do it three times real quick so one two three and we're now in strobe mode now on strobe mode it actually reduces itself down to 330 lumens but it will stay on on strobe so to turn everything off we're just going to click one time and our light is off 
So I want to talk a little bit about when you turn the light off and you go to turn it back on, the O lights retain their memory. So whatever you were last on, this light is going to remember where it was. So the last setting I had this on was the moonlight setting and you could probably see that on my hand. It's very dim and it's, it's, it's harder to see here in the daylight. But if we push and hold, let's go to low, push and hold again. Now we're on medium and press it once, we're gonna cut the light off. So instead of it coming back on a low setting or a high setting or moonlight, something like that, we're going to press it one time and it should go right back to our medium setting. And there we go. The only function that it will not remember is the strobe setting and it will not remember the turbo setting from what I understand. At this time, I like to go ahead and roll in the night footage so you guys can see how well it performed. All right, welcome everybody to the night test portion of this review. Now this, what you are seeing right now is the half lumen moonlight setting that runs for 15 days. That's incredible. You can run this light for 15 days on this particular setting, a single charge. Now I am about a foot from the camera. You can see my hand here. I'm about a foot from the camera. And you guys who know my video very well, there are there is a post that is right behind me, which is about six feet and you cannot see that on LCD. But I'm gonna walk back. I'm gonna take a couple steps back to that uh, post and see how quickly this drops off. Now, this is great if you're using this particular setting, uh, maybe in your bedroom, you just have it, keep it on a, on a uh, nightstand or something, and you're just checking for something like, hey, I'm trying to find my glasses, my contacts, whatever it may be. It's close for something very proximity where you're not disturbing the rest of the room. So I'm gonna take a step back. I'm about three feet from the camera now four feet, five feet, and I am at the post right now. So as you can see, it is very, very hard to see me if you can even see me at all. I'm walking back to the camera now, and we're gonna change this over to the low setting. You thought that was the low setting, but we're actually gonna bump it up to the low setting right now. All right, everybody, this is the 15 lumen setting of the S1 Mini Baton. Again, this will run for 30 hours on this setting. You can see my hat very well. You can even see this black shamal that I'm wearing and the wrinkles in the fabric. So it's showing up really well. You can even see the post here behind me, which is about six feet typically where I keep it from the camera when doing these tests. Now looking back, I can see the first and second tree very, very easily. And then even the third and the fourth tree further back. But they're a little dim when it gets that far back here in person. But on camera, as I can see by my LCD, this shows up very, very well. And you maybe can kind of see this tree right in here. I'm not really sure. But again, this is the 15 lumen setting. We're going to bump it up now to the medium setting. All right, guys, what you're looking at now is the medium setting. This is a 60 lumens that will run for six hours. Now, I have to say that it is bright in my face and it does create a little bit of difficulty when looking at the LCD. You should be able to see this post very well that's at six feet. The first and second tree, you can see, you should be able to see pretty decently, but I can't see the LCD all that well, so I can't honestly tell you if that's showing up. Uh, the third and fourth tree, I doubt you can see on the LCD, but I can see back in there definitely about 100 feet or so, and it does an exceptional job. Um, seeing left and right of like what generally would be considered a hot spot, you can see very well on both sides of that. So I do like this setting. I do like the 60 lumens. It's more than enough light to navigate through those woods without a problem at all, and to be able to use that for six hours is phenomenal. Let's bump it up to the high setting. Take a look. Guys, we are on the high setting. 330 lumens this last one hour. I have 60 minutes of time on this setting. And my God, it is bright. I can't even look at the LCD. It is so bright in my face. Let me move out the way. 
the post. Can you see the post? Oh my God. The first and second tree, you should see perfect. The third and fourth tree that I was talking about, you should be able to see with no problem. Uh, the fallen branch that's like further down, that fallen branches may be 40, 50 feet back in there. And I can see well beyond that with this setting. My God, it is exceptional. Um, I can see far left and far right of generally what is considered the hot spot of the light. The ground cover, I can see from the light straight down, maybe two feet in front of the light and that light just continues on through that trail. Exceptional. I'm gonna move this up to turbo mode. When turbo mode is 600 lumens, but it only stays active for a minute. So it may cut off while I'm talking to you guys. Stay tuned, I'm bumping it up right now. All right guys, this is turbo mode. And I can't even see a thing in front of me. Holy cow. The post, the trees. If you guys can see the trees further back, I mean, that is great. Let me get out of the way. I'll try to move this around a little bit. Man, that is so, so bright. But it will run on this setting for six, 600 lumens. It'll run for one minute and then it'll drop down to 330 lumens and then run for another 55 minutes on that setting. And I have to say, that is incredible. I really wish it shows up on camera the way that it shows up here but that is fantastic. I would have no problems whatsoever navigating through there with that on turbo setting. And if you had somebody coming to uh, engage you in some type of physical altercation, if you was to shine this in their face like it is with me right now, I couldn't see. I am off center of the light right now. And I have to say that that light is still blinding to the point where only thing I can really see and barely make out is the corner of my LCD. Uh, guys, this, this is a fantastic light. It really is. And to be a compact EDC, now I think it may have dropped down in intensity a little bit because now I can see more of myself on the camera and I don't have that uh, real intense blare in my face like I did, but it is still very, very bright. Um, but definitely it did cut down on intensity because like I said, I can see the LCD. Man, it, it's, it's shocking. And you guys can see that in my reaction, but this is incredible, like it really is. Let's go ahead and change this over to strobe mode. Why I, I do these things, I don't know, but <laughs> I want to illustrate the strobe mode and if it's anything at all like the j5 tactical light review that i did uh, it shouldn't be a problem but olight it makes an exceptional light and i don't think this is going to go well at least for me all right guys this is the strobe light and like i thought it's very disorienting it's very like hard to focus on like what you're trying to think about or do but this runs uh, as a high setting. So this is a 330 lumen strobe light. You can look back into the woods. You can see everything flickering. My camera has a hard time focusing when I do strobes because it really messes with the optics of the camera and the camera's trying to figure out what it's supposed to be focusing on. But you can see back there very, very bright, very, very far and <clears throat> man if you had to send a signal for somebody to help you out or you were lost in the woods this definitely would get somebody's attention again i can clearly see the lcd is blurry i apologize for that i'm going to take it off a of strobe and we'll talk about this a little more okay guys i dropped it back down to the low setting and my eyes are still just messing with me right now because of that strobe test it's crazy how bright and how rapid that strobe is and how it plays such a, a big, man, I don't, holy cow, I don't even know what to say right now. My eyes hurt. I'm 
that strobe is is crazy it's uh it's something that is very disorienting i am still seeing spots in front of my face i can see the camera uh, area the lcd and the light on top but it, it's incredible and it's how bright that is you can draw so much attention with that uh, that flashing if you were in the woods or you were lost you heard maybe you hear somebody's voice and you're wounded and you flick that over to a strobe setting people would see that especially you know if you're hiking at night or camping or something people are going to see that that is bright and as you can see that was phenomenal the testing just was mind-blowing for me it was a big difference from between other lights that I have tested, even with the other Olight and the J5 Tactical Light that I did on another video. It's just, this light produces such a wide hot spot, and it is phenomenal. It just illuminates the entire area, and I was pretty excited when doing the testing that at, even at times I felt like I was at a loss of words because I was just blown away about how bright it really was. That pretty much wraps up everything I have today for the Olight S1 Mini Baton. Guys, I really want to appreciate the time you have spent to watch my videos. If you would, by all means, please give me a thumbs up. Please subscribe to the channel and hit that bell down there for future notifications so that you know when other videos have been released and don't miss out. I'm also very, very active on Instagram, as I said before. So for those of you guys who want to hop over there and visit and ask questions, please, by all means, do so. Uh, a lot of those questions lead to reviews such as this. Till next time, be safe. I'll see you out there. for the motorcycle to go by. Oh, that's a van, not a motorcycle. Oh my God. And a new van at that. Jalopy.
So there's the cat that you guys always see in my videos. And she seems a little preoccupied right now. But why is that? And I'll show you real quick. How about that? South Point Survival has got a new follower. Oh yeah!